Hello. Hey. <laughs> well, it's a big day. Yeah, episode 50. Over. Milestone for on Behind the Masterminds today. Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. And uh, today, with us all the way from the UK, Breakout Unbox. Breakout Unbox! Dave the man himself here. Uh, he's a little too loud. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he got too excited. I got some special effects going on here. <laughs> um, sorry, we're having a little bit of a mic issue. So if you hear echo, please let us know. We'll try to <laughs> yeah. make this up. Good. Um, right. So, is everyone hearing the echo, by the way? I'm kind of hearing myself a little bit. If not, then we're good. Yeah, I'm not sure where that's coming from. <laughs> All right. So, uh, now I know like everyone is probably really eager to find out who's a winner for Epic Escape Games, three games in one box. Um, but you'll have to be patient because we're not going to reveal that until the end of the show. Yeah, we're we're... <laughs> We're excited to see who the big winner is. Yeah, um, but we're um, we got a lot of entries, which I'm really glad because I was worried that all your hidden letters and numbers wouldn't be able to found by me. She was doubting me. Real quick, right away. Really Sh should, good. should I ask them? Oh, are we good to like disclose some stuff? No, this is till the end. I just said that. Yeah, I know, but okay, there was one great. letter that she was <laughs> questioning me on. All right, we're gonna talk about that later, <laughs> but right, we will do our regular drawing first, which is equally as exciting because it's from card and illustrations. Let's see who the winner is for the 1,000 piece jigsaw puzzle from Edgar Allan Poe's Macabre Mansion. I'm gonna borrow your wand. You ready? Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's Mary again. Marie! So hey, the <laughs> escape room of herself. So Congratulations. Oh, I know, wow. <laughs> Luck is on your side, yeah. for sure. I, I could see Myri, you know, uh, loving puzzles, jigsaw puzzles. Oh, so she loves yeah. all kind of puzzles. For sure. <laughs> um, all right, so now let's get back to our guest of the day. David. Mr. Dave himself. <laughs> All right, so David from Breakout Unbox is a training manager at Breakout. He was born to do this apparently because his last name is Lock. Lock. <laughs> okay, too early for the cheesy jokes. Moving on. Um, he has created various games across the branches. To name a few, Vacancy, Forsaken, Captured, The Rising Dead, Spellbound, Emporium of Magic. Last but not least, he's the co-creator of the game we just played, which is The Wizard's Apprentice. Yeah. Great game. So David, what is a training manager and what is your daily routine like? Um, so my job is to train all of the staff um, at our various branches, but mainly in Manchester. Um, it's my job to make sure everyone knows how the games run, how the tech works, if anything goes wrong, what to do, and all customer service things. And I do the recruitment for the for the site as well. Okay, so on your um, website, it's mostly the subscription games, but you're saying that you actually have real escape rooms as well. Exactly, yeah. So we started out, um, it was it's just Breakout, Breakout in Manchester, um, which are real life escape rooms that you can go and visit and play. Um, and we have branches in Liverpool and Chester as well. Um, and yeah, that, that's, that's where our main business was until lockdown and we created the boxes. Ah, oh, okay. yeah. any of these are boxes uh, related to the real escape rooms? Like so, any of the games? Well, when we when we started the boxes, um, it was it was smack in the middle of lockdown. Um, we 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 tried a couple of the online escape rooms that you can just play, you know, via Zoom, um, which were okay. But we really wanted to try and give people the real feel of an escape room inside your house. So we went back and forth with a different, few different ideas and we did have the idea of maybe tying it into our original escape rooms but the time that we started this was around Christmas time and we thought we had to do a Christmas box and it would be a, an opportunity wasted um, if we didn't so we did a one-off Christmas box just to see how it went and it, it went really well uh, and that's when we decided to make another one and that's when The Wizard Apprentice came in. Ah, okay. One of my questions uh, I wanted to know about the Christmas box, but we'll get back to that. Yeah, so um, prior to Break and Unbox, have you, have you always been a game designer? Like what types of games were the ones you've designed in the past? Like strategy, RPG? 
Uh, so no, I wasn't a game designer. Um, I was an actor originally um, before before doing this. And when this came around into Manchester, um, th- this um, idea hadn't really been a thing. Um, yeah, I think it came around about seven years ago and I'd never heard of these things before. And our director, um, Ed, he created our first game and he brought it to Manchester to see how it would do. Um, and I was one of the first people to play it and I really enjoyed it. I pestered him for a job because I loved it so much. Um, and from there, we just kind of built and designed together with a few other people and it just kind of became a snowball effect. So I had no prior knowledge of how to design games. I just kind of learned as we went along and played all across the country and all across the world to try and make sure we were making the best content really. Gotcha. gotcha. Sorry, guys. I don't think that's it's my thing, though. All right, I will try. Is it better? A little yeah. bit. Okay. Younger. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So you got uh, me intrigued before we started the game with the wizard. I'm a big fan of Harry Potter, so this is like mm-hmm. right up my alley. Um, what was your inspiration at creating a magic world like this in your game design? I think it was. We have a few games in our real life escape rooms that are based around magic or fairy tales or, you know, things of that nature. And them and horror rooms always sell the best. Um, it's, it's a really big market. You know, people see a magic room, they automatically think Harry Potter and that's the one that they go towards. So after the Christmas room, it was a no brainer. We thought this is going to be the one that appeals to most people it's going to be the one that sells the best because it's a theme that near enough everyone likes so when we were going through them yeah we could have gone down the the horror route but i think this was more of a mass appeal that would you know cater to every single audience that we wanted to yeah exactly okay um, so you know, we love the uses of the various elements and, and like the family history of the wizarding world, mythical creatures, etc. How much of that was researched on and like how much was it just purely imagination? I think a lot of it was imagination. Um, I think there's, there's basically these four of us who create the content for the box and come up with everything. And we sat down and we brainstormed everything we could about magic. So, you know, everything from Harry Potter to, um, you know, obscure old films and Game of Thrones. We tried to put every little bit of great magical TV or film that was out there, choose the best bits and then design our own world around what we thought were the best bits in these TV and film. Um, But yeah, it it was a lot of what's good in that, right? How can we make it better? That, That was our thinking of it, yeah. Oh, okay. So, like, very similar. Why is my game talking? I, I have no idea. I, I think there's some magic going on in this, <laughs> my voice. In this show that's... <laughs> I'm scared to talk. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, one of, uh, one of my favorite parts of the game was the video elements that went along with the storyline. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not going to spoil anything, but it, it was very magical, let's say. Yeah. So um, it went with the theme like really well with it. Um, and I actually wanted to ask about the actual set design that you you had like in the game at the end. You kind of had a little bit in the trailer as well. Yes. Was that an actual physical escape room uh, or is it staged for the game? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like I said before, luckily we have, um, we were designing these rooms inside our escape room um, facility because it was not being used at the time. And luckily we had some magical themed escape rooms. So we have one called the Emporium of Magic, which a lot of that takes place the in the videos that you've seen, a lot of it takes place inside that set design. Um, and we have another room called Enchanted, which is more of a fairy tale, um, but it does lend itself to magic in certain bits. So it's a combination of the both of them. Oh, wow. I really uh, wanted to play that one in person for sure. Yeah, (laughs) hopefully we make it over there soon and we can check that out in real life. Curious, uh, what other themes do you have there now that you're saying that perhaps your games might utilize some of the spaces and thinking what themes would you be coming up next with these boxes? Um, Well, the next box has literally just been announced um, and it's a murder mystery box. Uh, So 
we had to. It's it, it's it's the most logical choice. Um, but we really put a lot of time and effort into this. We we wanted a really original story, um, and we've we've come up with something that's I think really really cool. Um, the, the the story that goes along with it is very detailed and very in depth. And you really do have to do a lot of investigative work on your own. Um, it's very different to the other box and the Christmas box. Um, but that's the next one. That one's out on sale now. So it's uh, it's called The Home Detective, that one. Oh. Um, Is there a yeah. on the uh, murder mystery one? That, that, that's it. The, the, the oh, murder mystery okay. is that one. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is that going to be like, can you play it by yourself or do you actually need a group of people for the deduction aspect? Um, well, it'd be easier with a group of people as always. I mean, there's no, there's no saying you can't do it by yourself. It'll just be a lot harder, I guess. No, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I realize um, if I keep talking, the echo goes away, but then it yeah, goes away. Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to cut in so I can keep going. Yeah. Speech. Maybe our audience, if you have any questions that you want to ask David, just type it in and we can relay those over. It's probably better that. Or David can just relay so we can cut up our echo. <laughs> we'll just do this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, if any of you would like to embark on this magic journey, you can put the spell of... Yeah, so you're going to have to, you know, what we're going to teach you a spell to use right now. This is the secret spell if you want to win the Wizard's Apprentice. It is Sells Up Evil Eye. <laughs> Made up one. If you could figure out what that it actually is. Give it fun. a shot. <laughs> Type that in the comment section below and then you have from now until episode 52... Um, before we put, pick the winner for that one. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that is the uh, the entry phrase to yeah. um, enter for the raffle of the wizard. Yeah. This game. Um, so Shipped anywhere in Europe or Commonwealth countries plus the USA and Mexico. Don't ask me what Commonwealth countries <laughs> are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you also have another game called Locked Up in Lapland, which seems mm -hmm. to be more of a holiday themed game about Santa, which you were just mentioning. But did that one come out for First, or did the wizard? So Locked Up in Lapland was the first one that we did. Um, that was that was designed. Um, probably we, we started to think about that um, around October last year um, when you know lockdown was still you know kind of restricting how many people were coming into the business and things. And um, we tried to find new ways to do things, and that's when we came up with the concept. Well, and is that more like uh, it's friendly, like a lot of uh, references to Santa? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's still, it, it's as with any escape game, um, it's still tough. Uh, it's still, it's still a really good challenge, um, but very different to The Wizard's Apprentice. And um, we had to make one. It, it's Christmas, so we had to make one that's very family friendly. Um, but I wouldn't say that. You could just play it if you were just kids. You, you you need adults with you because some of the puzzles are quite complex, but it's very family friendly and the kids can get involved in certain areas, I would say. Yeah. Very wow. similar to this one then with the uh, website component as well as the mailer, stuff that comes in the mail? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Great. Um, and what is the team size like in Unbox? Um, is it fairly, I mean, I guess the box part of it is fairly new, but are you guys, and then uh, tell us about the escape room uh, company. Has that been a while? Yeah, so we've been around um, in Manchester anyway, since 2014. Oh. Um, that, that's, what, that's when it started in 2014. Um, and the team has I mean, it started with one room, uh, as most places do. Tried it out in Manchester to see what it was like, and it just kind of took off. It went crazy. Um, and now, you know, we've got a few different centres. We've got two in Manchester. We've got one in Liverpool, one in Chester. Um, our games uh, have franchised all over the world. So, you know, there are certain breakout games that are in Egypt and America and um, Italy and Greece, all over the show. Um, so it really, it was really really going well um and the obviously um the pandemic happened and yeah. um, it slowed us down a little bit but then we came up with the unboxed idea um and that team is just four of us there's just four of us who um work together and we just try and create the best box that we can 
Right. So you're you're coming all over the world. Like you have locations in Egypt and oh wow, in USA also. Uh, yeah. No. So yeah. Well, so we have we have our main bases in England, but we also have um, our games have sold like franchise versions of Breakout have sold all over the world. So you know there'll be a there'll be a Breakout in Italy. There'll be a Breakout. There's a there's a couple in America. There's one in. Um, there's one in um, Wisconsin um, and there's a few all over the show, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm getting confused with the breakout. There's so many different breakouts, but your logo, breakout yeah, their logo is logo's completely team. different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. Um, so what has been some challenges you face like as, as a new company? Um, are you, most of your customer base from word of mouth? Um, we have a really good fan base uh, because we could, we could lean back on um, break out our physical escape rooms. Um, we, we have a great fan base in Manchester and Liverpool and Chester. Um, so we used that, we, we advertised to them. Um, and, and again, from there, it's that, that, that's where our main customs come from. Um, the difference is with this though, we've been able to ship all, obviously all over the world, but right. to all places in the UK that our centers aren't. So, you know, people up in the north in Scotland who aren't able to come down and play our games, it's been able to go to them. So that's been a real good blessing. Yeah. Um, and any fun stories you like to hear during your creative process or like favorite customer story? I know you said you mentioned something you want to tell us about that time when you uh, first got a chance to design your own room. Yeah, so when I first got the opportunity to do this, we'd, we'd gone round and had a look at all the escape rooms that we could and I was given the opportunity to design my very first escape room and I was so excited. I, I did a bunch of research and I, I was set to make the best escape room in the world, obviously. Um, and when you're designing an escape room, you want it to be authentic and one of the most expensive things to do is to make it look authentic, the set design. Mm -hmm. So furniture, um, and you know, when I was trying to buy the furniture, I thought I'd struck a gold mine. And I thought, I found this furniture online, I thought, this is amazing. I'm gonna get this in. My boss is gonna be so pleased with me because I've come way under budget. Um, and I bought 20 different furniture items for a doll's house. Oh, wow. So I had a filing cabinet that big. I had a wardrobe that big. A sofa. <laughs> I had the world's smallest escape room. And I, think, I think I'd spent £20 on each item. I thought, I've, I've done it. I've, I've created the best escape room. And wow. it wasn't that small. Well, I mean, you could technically design like a puzzle in the dollhouse, and oh, I, used them. I definitely them. used them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just make sure you provide like a, so you a magnifying glass yeah, yeah. with the puzzle itself. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, like in the description, they never told you the size of the furniture. You just kind of. I mean, they probably they probably did. I think I was just too excited when I when I saw them. I thought, yeah, I think I saw this really industrial looking cabinet and it had locks and things on it. I thought that looks in that looks incredible. That's just what we want. And it turned up and it was two inches. So, I'm curious. Did you show up with the truck and then all of a sudden it was like, okay, <laughs> it was put no, this it was it was shipping <laughs> wasn't even included. That's what no, you uh, uh, right? well, that's, <laughs> that was the best part. Uh, I told everyone, I was like, I have got the best, uh, I've got the best set you are ever going to see. And um, what, one of the girls I worked with, she walked in with this box and she was like, your set's arrived. And the box was this big. And I was like, you are joking. <laughs> we opened the box and every single piece was two inches tall. I was gutted. Yeah. Like, you know, I am trying to do this. This is what yeah. I actually plan to do. A yeah. mini escape room. Well, I mean, you know it looks like you have a lot of people interested. Uh, Myri said you should totally turn it into a tiny escape room and shake it directly to people. Um, Angela has done this, <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> so, oh, and yes, yeah. miniatures are very expensive. Yeah, absolutely. Really expensive, yeah. <laughs> Wait, was it built to scale? Like, was it comparable to the other furniture pieces? Or? They looked amazing. They looked amazing. Like, they were they were handcrafted. They looked fantastic. And um, well, obviously, just not the right size, but they looked amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it seems like each of your puzzle boxes are unrelated stories. Would you ever think about like a monthly sub kind of release? Like how often would you be releasing games? 
So we do offer uh, we do offer a bi monthly sub at the minute. Um, so our boxes will get sent every two months anyway. Um, but we've never we've not at the minute discussed a store like a continuous story. We we set out to make very individual boxes throughout the year. Um, we, we've we've spitballed maybe about turning one into a into a series, maybe maybe doing a trilogy of the same story, um, but we we haven't we haven't gone that route just yet. But well, maybe maybe. In the future. Okay. Um, for now, I guess the I mean, mystery one is the one that you have, or you have um, other ones that perhaps is in the works. So yeah, I mean, we literally just. I think it was like five days ago or four days ago. That's when the, the murder mystery one um, went on sale, um, and we, we only stopped working on that maybe maybe a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. So we're just concentrating on getting that one out at the minute, um, and then we'll we'll see where the next one takes us. We haven't got any ideas yet at the minute, so if anyone wants to jump in the comments and let us know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. Give them some yeah. of the feedback and comments and ideas. Well, be before you do that, I wanted to ask you, like, do you have a specific demographic? Because I know, like, The Wizard's Apprentice is more, like, for everyone, like, friends and, like, family and, and kids. Yeah. And then you have the Christmas one, which is for kids. Then you have a murder mystery one. Like, is that still, like, family friendly or is that a little bit more for a different crowd? <sighs> well... I guess it is more for a different crowd. Um, I would, if we were going to be selling to, if, if a, you know, someone rang us up and said we want a box for that's going to be family friendly, that would be the box that I recommend. You know, mm -hmm. I'd automatically go to the Wizard's Apprentice or the Christmas box. Um, this one I think is aimed um, at a more mature audience. Um, it's, I think it's a, I think it's a bit more difficult. This one, um, mm -hmm. I don't think this is one way you can just jump into. You know, there's a lot of working out and investigating in this one, so it, it, it is a bit more of a mature game. Right. Does your name have those locks in there? You know, somewhat symbols. Physical padlocks. I love those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So th that, that was the point. Like we we tried a few of the online Zoom escape rooms that you can do just through the computer, and, and you know, some of them are really good, but we really wanted to make it authentic. We wanted people to get a box and have because. The stuff that you do inside the rooms, that's what makes it. When you're opening a padlock, when you find a wand, when you find cards and you get to lay them out and things like that, we wanted to make an authentic box that you could have in front of you and have to work it out and use things over and over again. So every box will have something different in it. Like, for example, you guys got the wand in the Wizard's Apprentice book. Um, there will be a, a different main prop in the... Um, in the murder mystery room, which is, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's a really cool prop that we're quite proud that we've got in there. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so, I'm, 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 I mean, I really like the uh, puzzle, like how you intertwine the puzzles and the uh, website usage on this, because I mm -hmm. really, like most of the games I play, it's either they're really obvious about like saying, oh, you know, you have to use this puzzle and then get a three digit. But then for this one is more like, oh, you, you'll know when you have to get out of the website and utilize the something else to unlock the, the bag. But then you'll have to jump onto the website again and then like enter a password or something in order to get something else. So it just feels like it's very seamlessly, you know, designed together. Are you the, the uh, puzzle designer or the actual like graphics? Like, is there a few parts in this yeah so like I said before there's four of us and we all literally do everything you know we'll all be involved in the puzzles the design the story we, we kind of interchange jobs between us all um, it's, it's a big group effort but that's one thing we're really proud of the way the way that you said that it kind of seamlessly goes on with each other and um, We've played escape rooms before, like I said, when they say, oh, you'll get a three-digit code, you'll you'll put it into this padlock and then you'll get into it. It can be too easy sometimes, and that's something that we've always tried not to be. We've tried not to just give you the answer. You know, you'll, you'll know. If you figure it out, you'll know what you're going to have to do. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps up our interview segment. If anyone has any other questions, let us know. But um, if you are ready for our Think or Drink segment, this is where oh, we yeah. test your game knowledge. She's um, ready. <laughs> <laughs> and we played uh, the Year Wizard's Apprentice. So that is the game that we'll test you on. Do you have your drink ready? Yes, I do. All right. So we're about to play Think or Drink with Dave from Break Breakout Unbox. Here we go. Think or drink. Think or drink. Yeah. 
All right, Dave, so what do you have to drink in front of you? What type of brand, what type of alcohol, what is it? Uh, I'm drinking a Mexican lager, so it's from two tribes, uh, Mexican lager. Ooh, never seen that one. Okay. Wow, that sounds good. Um, just out of curiosity, do you have Facebook open right now? I'm wondering if that's where the extra audio is coming from, because I turned off our Facebook as well. No Facebook, it's literally just the one yeah, screen. I don't know. So it literally is a Wizard's Apprentice in Something here somewhere that sabotages yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> frequency well since it's episode 50 we are celebrating because we have met so many interesting creators and audience members and uh we're very happy that everyone's been tuning in and grateful that uh we have you know uh, we've heard so many wonderful stories so we're gonna celebrate we're actually gonna drink champagne um oh. see you're gonna drink too right also mainly because yesterday i opened it for the live stream with you know mari and everyone else and uh i you i drank it out of the bottle and i just couldn't finish so just why we're bringing it out again today. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad choice between sake and champagne mix, but yeah. uh, so but this yeah. one is Blanc de Blancs. Uh, it says Anna Cordonu. I'm not sure. It's very nice bottles, all white. Um, and CC was chugging from this yesterday. <laughs> I was like, no cup. Oh well. <laughs> so the way we play Think or Drink is we're going to ask uh, David questions. If he gets it right. Cece and I will be toasting it up with this champagne because she's going to drink too. Um, if he gets it wrong, he's going to be drinking that Mexican lager. I believe you said two tribes. That's it, yeah. Okay, um, so let's pour this first because I feel like Dave is on point. He might be getting I some- don't know. You know me and my torturous questions. We'll see. I'll, I'll start <laughs> off with just a little bit of a pour right here. And then Cece also yeah, we will I- clink. Every time we can't do this again today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me bring the counter, and we have a new counter because Cece was not a fan of the old counter. So let me grab that for us right now. Uh, are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. Are you ready, Dave? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Okay, and the audience can help you if they've played the game, um, or if they is it is it only strictly within this game, or is there outside knowledge involved? No, that's it. Just okay. this game. We'll and... see if they can help yeah. you. Oh, thank you, Helen, for wishing us. Thank Happy you, Helen. Birthday. We appreciate we that. We love you. Okay, so. All right, first question, first question. is going to start off. Here we go. On the map of the town, right? The map of the town. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry. Huh? If you have an answer and the countdown's still going, you can raise your hand. I'll stop, and then we can. Otherwise, you can wait till it's done. Okay. Here we go. Okay. On the map of the town, what is to the right of the broomstick racetrack? I'm assuming you don't have the map in front of you. you <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Um, that the map is huge. Like that map, has, that map has got so many things on it. And um, I don't know. I'm gonna have to take a stab in the dark and say, great, great, great grandparents' house. No. No. <laughs> I was gonna mess with you and say, wait, you're off by a great, but no, it wasn't even close. <laughs> Uh, it was the camping grounds. Camping grounds. Camping grounds. <laughs> that map is so big. Like, yeah. I thought we not my clue. It is. Absolutely. Big. So she's starting off. Are you starting off hard or are you starting off easy? Like, what are you I, doing I here? I don't know. I'm just randomly picking this All one. right. <laughs> Question number two. <laughs> On the same map. Oh, God. <laughs> In the fairy pond that's filled with yellow water, how many little, uh, sorry, how many lily pads are in the pond? Okay, um... Maybe it's a pun. Can't put too many. I think... Four? <sighs> wow. Oh, you, wow. You should give it if it's like we give it? one. All right, well, we'll drink together. The answer okay. is five. Well, it was so close, and we're going to toast. Yeah, cheers. Cheers, and cheers to you. Mmm. <laughs> Actually, it tastes better than yesterday because it was kind of lukewarm by no the end. No wonder she was... Because we, we streamed for four hours and then by the end it was like not, not yeah. even chilled anymore. This is, this is really good. <laughs> Anna de Cordonu. Blanc de Blancs. All right, sorry. <laughs> Going on to the next question. Okay. Uh, was Beatrix a master at good arts or dark arts? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm my time. <laughs> Funny two choice. She's the first guest that used the whole 10 seconds. <laughs> um, I got dark arts. <gasps> she got arts. <laughs> it's a trick question. Because she's good at both. 
Stop. But you're half right, so we'll drink together yeah. again. Yeah, yeah I'm okay. so bad. Cheers. I'm so good. Mean. Cheers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, oh, this is good. I'm gonna refill anyways. Um, oh yeah, sure. Because I have a feeling uh, <laughs> we're gonna do a lot of these these toasting together. <laughs> I would think so. <laughs> All right. So the next question: the Phoenix you won. I hope I said it. You. You. Yeah. Won. The Phoenix you won. What type of wizard is it good for? I think I remember. <laughs> I thought he got it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I you is, it, is it good for a clumsy one? A uh, clumsy wizard? Oh, uh, we can't drink with one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, He's good for um, an example of what you just did. A forgetful wizard. Forgetful wizard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me bring this clock back. And the fifth question, um, Cece. Okay. Um, all right, this one I feel like he's definitely gonna I'm get. I'm confident too, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he's like, he's uh, so it's on the Broomstick website. What's the blogger's name? Oh, I think. write the blog. Uh, I, should, I should get that. Is that, is, is the blogger, uh, is it Luna Loxley? No, no, uh, the, the blogger. Yeah, the blogger. The one that name. wrote the article. The one who wrote it, the blogger. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I could bring it. <laughs> I was gonna bring the clock back for you. Okay. <laughs> so it, sounds, it sounds like a, a play on words. It's Oliver Wood. Oliver Wood. Well, I guess it's supposed to be I. I love wood. Yep. Or I love. I, 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 I live. Whoever for wrote these, uh, you know, blogs, you should be like, why didn't you make the name easier for me? Look what happened. On the show. <laughs> so we do have a, a bonus question for you. Um, I guess we're not timing him on this one. No, right? this is just... Yeah, so if there was no limit on the budget and material, like none mm -hmm. whatsoever, what would be the ultimate game that you would like to create? And if, if it's too hard of a question, you could drink too. Like, <laughs> it's up to you. Well, I feel like after the miniature thing, he's probably going to be at the largest oh. <laughs> so, uh, ever. I, I did have an idea for a very oversized bedroom. So um, I don't know if you've ever been to... Um, uh, I think it's in you, you know, no, it's in um, Hollywood Studios in Florida. Um, oh. They have a, they have a full size set of um, Andy's bedroom from Toy Story, and it's so super, it's, it's super big. So you have all the furniture that's in there, and I had the idea that you were like, this is for a real life escape game, but that you were you were toys, or that you you had been shrunk, and then when you walked into the room, everything was giant, and so you'd have like these big padlocks on things. I thought that would have looked really cool. It wouldn't, need, it wouldn't need a big budget um, to have this, the size of the space and stuff, but I think visually that would look fantastic. So, Well, yeah. what I would suggest yeah. is you start off the opposite with everything miniature. Yeah. So, honey, I blew up the kids or something, yeah. and then do the like, sequel. Honey, I shrunk the kids on a larger budget and everything is super... Yeah. Well, I yeah, mean, like, right. you already got the miniature part. It's 50% done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one's ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah. Matthew Louie said that Oliver Wood was the Gryffindor Thank keeper. You. Thank no you, Matthew. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. No, totally yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally. <laughs> now we get it. <laughs> um, well, thank you, David, for being your guest on this very special, special milestone episode yes. of 50 with us. Uh, once more, uh, let's raise our glasses and cheer to the special moment. And thank you all for coming. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> uh, thank you to all our previous guests. And um, yeah. Is that it? <laughs> um, so, Cece, I think everyone's still <laughs> waiting for that epic escape raffle. Oh no! Um, reveal, <laughs> totally like, that's that. what they're here for? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's true. All right, so we're gonna have to do that before we end the show. Uh, does anyone re actually really want this? Does anyone, Is anyone really ready? Like, are they really Wait, excited? does anyone have the right answer? Like, you know, <laughs> they were submitting stuff and, No, you know, we, got just... a lot of, we got a lot of right answers, but is everybody ready for the winner? Well, before that I do that, because Cece and I had, I a, dis we had a discussion entries here Woo! we we had a discussion before this R real quick s s equals what oh so like s equals what, I even got what number alphabet s equals what type it in s equals the alphabet two. s equals what what does s equal <laughs> s does not equal yes or yes <laughs> or s <laughs> well, I mean like to be fair yesterday I had a really really long night uh well 
day or half a day. Matt, yes, there you go. 19, right. So <laughs> Mark, one of our uh, very, very uh, loyal viewers, was like, emailed me today and was like, I think like you probably like, you got too like excited on a show or something because like I didn't get it because S equals a 20 and then like I don't really get how like we're supposed to interpret this uh, other part of the puzzle and I was kind of like oh my god like in my head no no like, no but what did you like, do right like, away oh no Brandon you're so like you're so wrong yeah was, you're so wrong how can you make a wrong puzzle but what, like oh, so I didn't even verify with we're that. talking through text and while we're texting I'm doing this A B C D E F, me too five, I did it like 10 19 A B C D I did it like five times like what are you talking about so S equals to look so, at look at all the answers. Let me just tell you, I I missed the finger, and, <laughs> but then when I typed it out, it was fine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I got it. All yeah. right, let's do this. Who's the lucky winner for Epic Escapes? Uh, escape room in a box, three and one. Wow. Do you want to pick this one? Here, here, you can have a one. As, yeah, and and also if we pick Mari again, just FYI, we do have all these entries. There is no. <laughs> That. Yeah, yeah, we have. We if, have. if we find more again, then she has to go buy um, Lotto. That's all I have to say. Yeah, I mean, you can all say how much you love Brandon. It, it might encourage you to, you know, your your chances here. Um, anyways, <laughs> give me the dramas. <laughs> Oh, I got one. I got one. This one is so feeling very. This might be the Wizards Apprentice right summing me for the answer because the answer is. Cheryl McPhilmy, oh, wow. Jed's Cheryl. sister. Yeah, Congratulations, yeah. Cheryl. Oh, that's awesome. Bam. <laughs> <Nice>. All right. <laughs> Uh, now we're okay. all going to go to our house and play escape rooms together. Yeah. Oh, uh, Helen, you were too late. It, my hand would have, you know, <laughs> been drawn to pick your name. <laughs> all right, so yeah, well, my it? name might want. Wait, why? Because we're going to okay. bring Once this Once again, back. thank you, David, for being on the show. And for anyone who came in late, if you want a chance to win their magical puzzle game, The type Wizard's the Apprentice. Secret type spell. Type in the spell. Souls up, evil eye. <laughs> in the go. chat and if you're watching this in the post edit version feel free to type it in the comment section below anytime before episode 52 which will air on may 21st mm -hmm. uh and next friday we're gonna have a team of three brothers from cold case crackers on the show so tune in 4 p.m eastern time and we really cherish you know all your support this far and hope you guys are enjoying these show as much as we're enjoying making them um and if you haven't liked and subscribed to our youtube and twitch tv please give us a sub we really appreciate it um and you can also check out our patreon program if you'd like to join us on our bi-weekly gameplays and other goodies so enjoy the weather and have a lovely weekend thank you david thank you to the audience thank you to all of our previous guests for the past 50 episodes and we are happy to continue these episodes because we love hearing your story have a wonderful weekend take care bye, bye everybody Invasion. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's go. Locked in. 60 minutes to escape. escape. Think before you move, there's no room for mistakes. Nope. If you got what it takes.